Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the White House, and happy Hanukkah. I should say that normally uh, we just have one Hanukkah reception, but this year we're hosting two. We have so many friends to celebrate with, uh, we had to do it twice. Uh, I welcomed a whole other group this afternoon, but uh, I want you to, don't tell them, uh, this is actually my favorite group right here. <laughs> It's our own little Hanukkah miracle. The party was only last, was supposed to last for one hour, and it's lasted for eight. <laughs> uh, I want to welcome so many friends uh, and leaders from throughout the Jewish community. Uh, we are honored to be joined by one-third of our Supreme Court, Justice Ginsburg, Justice Kagan, who's here somewhere. There she is, and uh, Justice Breyer is here. We've got some outstanding members of Congress, members of my administration with us, uh, including our new director of Jewish Outreach, uh, Matt uh, Nosenchuk. There's Matt. Matt's, Matt's out here somewhere. Uh, I also want to welcome representatives from uh, the State of Israel who are joining us. Uh, I, some of you recall I had just an extraordinary, magical visit uh, to Israel earlier this year and was proud to reaffirm uh, the alliance between our two great democracies. Um, I also had the opportunity to uh, go to an expo uh, where I saw the best of Israeli technology. And, and you know, there's just been such a, a burst of innovation and creativity that's taking place uh, including, by the way, I saw a robot that served me matzah. Uh, we were thinking about having that robot here to uh, serve latke, uh, latkes, but uh, we couldn't get them. So maybe next year. Uh, obviously, uh, on, on a note of seriousness, our, our, tonight our thoughts and prayers are with the Mandela family in South Africa. Uh, they're grieving the loss of a man a moral giant who embodied the dignity and the courage and the hope uh, and sought uh, to bring about justice, uh, not only in South Africa, but I think to inspire millions around the world, and he did that. Uh, the idea that every single human being ought to be free and that oppression uh, can end and justice can prevail. Yes. That's what That was a Supreme Court justice who said yes. <laughs> so I, that's what Nelson Mandela taught us, and it's that same spirit uh, that brings us here tonight. Now, over the last eight days, uh, Jews around the world have gathered with friends and family to light the menorah and retell the story that has been kept alive for more than 2,000 years. And it's a story of miracles, of a light that burned for eight days when it should have only lasted for one. Uh, and a people who surmounted overwhelming odds to rec reclaim their historic homeland so they could live their lives in peace and practice their religion in peace. It's a story that's been repeated countless times throughout Jewish history. And as we light the candles tonight, uh, we're reminded that we're still writing new chapters in that story today. In 1922, uh, Abraham and Haya uh, Ettinger donated this menorah to their congregation in a small town that's now the Czech Republic. And tragically, the Edingers uh, and their prayer hall were lost in the Holocaust. Yet even in the face of tragedy, Jewish communities around the world kept alive a light that would not be extinguished, the hope that freedom would triumph over tyranny. And tonight, we're honored that the menorah that once belonged to the Edingers will be lit by two Holocaust survivors from the former Czechoslovakia, uh, Margit uh, Meissner and Martin Weiss. <laughs> the triumph they represent and the triumph this menorah represents, the progress that it represents, the notion that we can join together here tonight reminds us that we can never take our blessings for granted and that we always need to keep working uh, for peace 
and the freedom that we seek. And that's why we continue to stand up for our values around the world. That's why we stand alongside and partner with those allies who share those values, uh, including the State of Israel. You know, together with our Israeli friends, we're determined to prevent Iran from obtaining a nuclear weapon. And, and we're, we're testing uh, whether it's possible uh, through diplomacy to achieve that goal, understanding that uh, we have to remain vigilant. You know, for the first time in a decade, we've halted the progress of Iran's nuclear program. And key parts of the program, <laughs> key parts of the program will be rolled back, uh, even though the toughest of our sanctions remain in place. And that's good for the world, and that's good for Israel. Over the coming months, we're going to continue our diplomacy with the goal of achieving a comprehensive solution that deals with the threat of Iran's nuclear weapons once and for all. And through it all, as always, uh, our commitment to Israel and its security will remain ironclad and unshakable. Uh, building a future of security and peace is not easy. But the story of Hanukkah, of survivors like uh, Margit and Martin, leaders like Nelson Mandela, remind us that those who came before us overcame even greater obstacles than those that we face. So let's take strength from their struggles and from their sacrifice. Let's give thanks for miracles, large and small. Let's recommit ourselves to building a future that shines with hope and freedom and peace. Uh, I want to thank all of you uh, for the contributions you've made uh, to communities across the country, uh, and the many friends who've been so supportive to Michelle and, and myself uh, during these years. Uh, and with that, uh, I want to welcome Rabbi Joshua Sherwin, a lieutenant in the United States Navy, to say a blessing. Thank you, Mr. President. As Hanukkah formally ends this evening, uh, it is appropriate for us to gather to remind ourselves and the world the true meaning of this holiday. In that spirit, at this wonderful gathering, we now kindle the menorah and recite two blessings uh, as we kindle these lights. The Sha'asa Nisim, thanking God for the miraculous capability to bring light to the darkest corners of the world, and for the leaders who are dedicated to strengthening religious freedom in our days just as the Maccabees did in ancient ones. The second bracha will all join together in the Shehechianu, the simple yet powerful prayer of thanksgiving for the blessing of life, for the gift of light, and for the privilege of celebrating this Hanukkah together. I invite you to join me. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, she'asa nisim lavoteinu, bayamim hahem, Azman Hazet Meshech Yanu Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Shehech Yanu Viki Emanu Vihigianu Lazman Hazet Amen.
came in a little late, but that's okay. Uh, there's only one last piece of business that I need to do. Uh, this was prepared for us. So, some of you may be aware that uh, Thanksgiving uh, and the first day of Hanukkah converge only every 70,000 years. So presumably this is the first uh, and last time that this may be used. This was prepared for us. This is uh, called uh, a minerki. And I just wanted to make sure that those of you who were not familiar with the minerki, that we had our own here in the White House. Enjoy the reception, everybody. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless America.